if you want to make your eyes look bigger and you fancy having a little play with your makeup, I'm going to show you this spotlight smoky eye today. Hiya, I hope you're keeping well. Um, today, to be honest, today's video was kind of, I got stuck into the moment and created this. I didn't even know whether to post it and I thought, do you know what, someone will like it. Um, spotlight smoky eyes are really lovely to kind of widen the eyes, make them appear bigger and fuller. And I think it's one of those makeups where you have to trust the process because there were points doing this that I was like, you look like you need a week of sleep. And then I just kind of stuck with it and it all came together. So I thought you might enjoy. As always, everything I've used is listed in the description of the video. So if you click to make it a full screen, the title will come up along the top. Click the arrow next to it and a full list of products will drop down. But by all means, you can substitute these techniques with whatever you've already got in your makeup bag. Today, I really want to focus on eyes. So I'll just quickly run you through everything I'm going to do for my base. I'm going to start with a little bit of Clinique Moisture Surge just to prep my skin. Um, this is a really lovely kind of light gel texture. So it's great for under your makeup because it absorbs really quite quickly. But at the same time, if your skin is feeling in any way dry, it can lead to kind of patchy looking or feeling makeup. Um, so this is a really lovely prep and also something great for when you're trying to get ready quickly. Next I'm going to use the It Cosmetics CC Cream in the shade Light Medium and I'm going to apply this all over the complexion. Um, today, you know when you're just kind of like pottering about and tidying and that kind of thing, I put on old episodes of Keeping It With The Kardashians on Netflix and it's funny, I was having a conversation with my friend this morning saying that like I think my makeup style has got a little bit softer recently, just in terms of what I do if I'm kind of going out and about. And then I was watching them this morning thinking, oh my gosh, I really fancy getting back stuck into some really polished makeups. Um, so I may put a tiny bit more of this than usual on today, just to kind of give a completely flawless finish to this makeup. While that settles, I'm just going to put some pencil through my brows and this is the Peaches and Cream Medium Brow Definer. Now I'm just using a sponge to work a little bit of bronzer through the outer parts of my face. Um, if you've watched my videos for a while, you're going to find this really funny because I always say I'm not a fan of sponges. And recently I've just been using them a little bit more. Um, they do give such a lovely finish and I want to be really clear, like I don't think there is such a thing as right or wrong. If you use a sponge and you like the finish, brilliant. Most people do. I seem to be in the minority for not caring for them too much. Um, but the main reason I always kind of stay away from them is that I know, let's say like really quantifiably, if I use my CC cream with a sponge, I need far more pumps to get the same level of coverage than I would need if I used my brush or hands. And whenever I mention that, people say, no, you're meant to dampen the sponge. And I do, I promise you, I dampen it. But I just think the nature of a sponge is that it's going to drink things up. Um, so in terms of getting the longest wear out of your products, they might not be the best thing. However, I can't deny that I feel like they give a really lovely, even finish. And for me, having redness and wanting to build coverage, it's great to press things on rather than rub them in. So they can be really good for that. Um, and also recently, my skin's been a little bit more dry. And again, that pressing motion rather than rubbing can give a really nice finish. So I'm starting to come over to the, the side of the sponge. Now, I just thought I'd add some peach to this makeup because I've got this peachy jumper on. So I'm actually going to use, this is one of my favourite peaches of all time. It's Fresh Melon by Bobbi Brown. Um, this is the pot rouge that you can use on cheeks or lips. And I'm pressing this just really towards the center of the face so that I've got a little pop of color when you look at me forward on. Um, something else that came up in a lot of questions and I'll do a dedicated video to it is applying blusher when you have rosacea. The first thing I'd say is, again, I'm patting this on rather than rubbing it in, which can be really helpful. And also if you're looking to kind of detract from the redness, 
peachy colours can be a really nice way to still have a bit of flush of colour there, but that feels maybe, you know, a bit different to the colour you're used to seeing on your cheeks. Now, I like this kind of fresh look, but I'm just going to powder the T-zone and leave the rest fresh so that I get the best of the glow without it tipping over into kind of sweaty territory. And then if you ever needed proof that I loved this, look how tiny my <laughs> pillow talk is. I'm going to put some lips on. And then I just followed it with some lip balm. Now I thought I'd share some tips for how to really make the most of your eyes and make them feel a bit bigger. Something that really came through in the question stickers was working with maybe a hooded eye shape, working with deep set eyes. And I really think a lot of this is just about unlearning that tail old thing that we learned at school of colouring within the lines. If you utilise all of the space around your eyes, I promise you, you can really feel like your makeup looks fab. Um, I'm going to use some of the Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk things. They've just come through and they're lovely. And another thing that kind of came through was soft looks for weddings and things like that. And I think a lot of this collection is a really good testament that if you switch to maybe dark browns and warmer colours instead of, you you know traditional jet black liner or mascara that can really soften things as well this is the secret to getting a really soft eyeshadow blend instead of going back and forth in a windscreen wiper motion i want you to buff off any excess on the back of your hand before you begin start in the outer eye and then just really gently pick up the brush each time and work from the outside to the inside. Now, not only does this give you this lovely gradient where the eyeshadow gets softer as you go further into the eye, but it means that if the skin on your eyes is a bit more movable, you're not dragging it back and forth. You're just gently picking it up bit by bit and building things at a pace that feels good for you. Now that that's blended, I'm going to put on some of the Pillow Talk eyeliner. Now, full disclosure, if you wanted to make your eyes look bigger and brighter, you'd probably be better positioned to use more of a flesh coloured liner. So whatever your complexion looks like, find a colour really similar to that and use that in the waterline and it will brighten everything up. However, if we're also thinking of kind of bringing out the eyes and making the most of them, the likes of this, which is more of an auburn plummy colour, will help to bring out the blue. So even though it might not necessarily make my eyes look bigger, it will help to draw attention to them and make them look brighter. There's a lovely mixture of mattes and shimmers in this palette and shimmers can be really good to get you out of a tight corner if anything has kind of gone awry with your blending. So the first thing I'm gonna do is really focus on getting the matte colors where I want them and then I'll add the sparkle at the end. So this is gonna go under the lash line. And I'm going to go into the corners because I'm going to do more of a spotlight smoky eye. Now I'm going to go slightly back on myself. And I'm just going to wing out the outer corners of these eyes ever so slightly. And then I'm going to use a clean brush just to soften this out a little bit. And now I'm going to very gently hook these corners out a little bit. And keep in mind, I've got two brushes on the go at any one time. One brush to apply and a clean brush to blend. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I have gone completely wider than the natural lines and arches. So for example, you can see when I frown, my crease ends kind of here on both sides, but I've gone wider than that. And that means that even when I'm resting, you can see where that shadow was and it's pulled the whole eye. Now, I know this looks quite theatrical, but give me a moment and I promise you we'll pull the whole thing together. Now I'm going to start using shimmer and glitter. And the first thing I'm doing is taking a shimmer shade all over the lid. And then I'm following up with a glitter shade just in the centre of that shimmer. And then at this point I was having a look and I felt like all of my colours needed to join together a bit more smoothly. So I went back in with that original socket shade, retraced that and also retraced some of the inner corners and then blended the edge. Now that's feeling a bit theatrical for me in all honesty. So to take it down a bit, I know this sounds counterintuitive, I'm going to add a little bit more colour. 
I'm going to round these edges and blend them out. And now I'm going back to the original blending brush, buffing off any excess. And I'm just going to soften again with individual pickups the ends of that plum. And one thing I'd say, if you're not feeling like your makeup is feeling quite right, once you've put your mascara on, it tends to feel better. So have a look. How lovely is that? And it's pulled the whole thing together. I must say, in terms of like browns and plums that I have in my mascaras, this is quite a light magenta. I don't have anything as light as that. And you can really see, like some of them are quite subtle, aren't they? And you only notice that it's a navy or a green when it catches the light. But I'll be really interested to try that without any other makeup on. Um, but lovely colour. Do you know what? I know I went completely off piece there, but technically that is still a great technique to make your eyes look bigger. Because if I show you, all of these colours have gone above and wider than my natural creases. I've got enough kind of magenta in there to bring out the blue. And um, it's just quite nice, isn't it? Having a little play and seeing what happens. So <laughs> might not have gone to plan, but I'm actually so glad I did that. Thank you for sticking with me for what was essentially a fever dream style makeup tutorial. Um, I hope it was helpful. I'll definitely work through some more questions in the coming days and weeks and enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll chat to you soon.